Japan was home to the largest crypto exchange back in 2014 and Satoshi Nakamoto is a very Japanese sounding name even if it's probably not related. After such a good start, Japan fell behind more nimble countries. But not all is lost because Japan has developed its very own ecosystem. Let me tell you all about it and why Japan is on the verge of becoming a crypto powerhouse. And let's start with a counterintuitive one which is regulation. Yes, regulation. In the West, we are still talking about how to regulate crypto, whereas here in Japan, it's already quite regulated. The reason for that is that Mongox got act in 2014 and 850,000 Bitcoin just disappeared, even though 200,000 of them were recovered afterwards. So the first crypto regulation came in 2016 and in 2018, CoinCheck, a local crypto exchange got hacked as well and the FSA, the Financial Security Agency, tightened the screws a little bit more. Now, the regulation is quite severe, but rather than me explaining everything, let's listen to Yuzo Kano, who is the founder of Bitflyer, one of the largest crypto exchanges, and also the president of the GVCEA, one of the industry governing bodies. Maybe the Japanese regulation model is one of the standards to actually uh, segregate the customer's assets from the firm's assets separately. So this is a mandate. This is very important. You need the segregation of the client's asset and that we cannot use any asset of the clients, even one yen. We need to store to the uh, cold storage and we need to put the fiat money to the, um, to the custodian. So in Japanese law, uh, we only need to actually have the annual report uh, audited by the uh, auditor so v flyer hired the EY and Xiang in the past actually eight years. They need to actually submit the uh, official letter of the, uh, the balance sheet and the financial statements. And it, we actually disclose on the web pages so that all customers can see it. As you can see, it's already much stricter than everything that can be discussed in the West. Basically, segregation between the customer's asset and the exchange asset with an annual audit. 95% of the customer's assets have to be stored in cold wallets and only 5% are in hot wallets, but they have to be insured by the crypto exchange for 100% of the value in case something happened. And another thing is that the trading margin is only 2x, which is much lower than in other Western countries or most of other countries. So it's much stricter, but it's all for ensuring that the customer's assets are well guarded and actually the government is very much involved as you can imagine for example everything falls under the payment service act that regulates everything related to payments prepayment credit card mobile wallet qr codes you name it and every crypto exchange basically has to be registered with the fsa as well as the local financial bureau and they obtain a number that permits them to trade, but before that, they have to be member of a self governing body like the GVCA. And then, only then, they can start trading and selling to customers. And that's not all. The government continue legislating. It's talking about tokenization of asset. It's talking about a digital Japanese yen and much more ways to continue pushing crypto forward while protected at the same time customers, but also existing payment system and payment operators like big banks, like Line, like PayPay from SoftBank, but more on that a little bit later. And you might wonder, what's in there for me as a consumer with all those very strict regulations? Well, actually, when our friends at FTX went belly up here in Japan, thanks to all those regulations and maybe also the fact that they had just started operating by buying back an existing operator, we got very quickly all our assets back. Yes, you heard it. We got all our assets back. I have more details in this video that you're seeing on screen. Yes, yes, I got order. Yes, they, it's all there, all there. And you can see how happy I was to get everything back. As a result, the local ecosystem is dominated by domestic companies with very few exchanges that are linked to foreign entities. And if we look at the list in total, you're gonna completely understand immediately where you see that only Coinbase, Amber, Tokyo Ash, Binance, and FTX are registered. And we know FTX is gone, 
Coincheck and Binance have already left the countries and gonna be deregistered. So basically what is left are local startups as well as subsidiaries of major financial group like Line, SBI Holdings or DMM. What's interesting is that it brings you all of the local taste in advertising. Also, the number of coins that are authorized to trade on those exchanges is also very regulated and very limited compared to other markets. As a result, crypto adoption is really low in Japan. If we look at the World Crypto Adoption Index, we see that Japan is number 18 out of 20, not very glorious. But there are a lot of reasons for that. General shyness for new financial product, general being risk adverse, also a very, very robust banking system, a very high adoption of credit card and a lot of mobile wallet payments that are helping people using and you don't really need crypto in your everyday life. And also a lot of regulation that limit the number of coins, but we've talked about that. And a tax system that consider crypto as a mean of payment. So basically you are taxed as a regular income, not as an investment. So all of this is really slowing down the adoption, but not all is lost because a lot of things are actually moving and there's groundbreaking work being done on the regulatory side as well as on the product side. And for starter, stable coin based on the Japanese yen, yes no later than July 24. So in six to seven months from today, there should be the launch of the DCJPY, which is a stable coin that's based on Japanese yen. So one-to-one -one with the Japanese yen. This is gonna be backed by Aozora Bank, and this is gonna be linked directly to bank accounts to permit to help a lot of financial transactions, making them less expensive and faster. We'll see how quickly this works. Actually, the Bank of Japan called Nichigin is actually doing a lot of research, a lot of thinking and consultation about launching a digital yen. And they have given themselves a deadline of 2026 to take a decision on whether or not to launch it. But they are looking with a lot of attention about the launch of DCJPY that I just mentioned. And they are talking to a lot of different institutions to see how this could help them modernize the whole ecosystem. And finally, there is asset tokenization. Yes, no later than December this year. We're already in December, so at the end of this month, there's gonna be the launch of the first asset tokenization for an amount of $20 million, which is relatively low in this world of finance. But this is a first and it's gonna be a test. It's done by the Osaka Exchange to see how this can be done and how this can be used to make it more available and readily available to investors, making less expensive and more widely available. This is very exciting because how many asset tokenization tests have you seen in your home country? If you have seen any, please let me know in the comment below. And even if you haven't, you can tell me at least I know where we all stand. The weekend is going to continue for the foreseeable future as the country is facing an uphill battle with its budget as well as its demography. And you can have more details about the demographic crisis in this video that we just produced. So a lot of Japanese people are trying to find ways to preserve the value of their yen against very low interest rate and increasing inflation. So a lot of them are turning to foreign exchange like Australian dollars or US dollars to place their money. But also some are thinking of placing their money into crypto to try to keep a bit of the value of their hard earned savings. And actually, even if Bitcoin didn't have a great run in the past two years, if we look at this trend, we see that actually it kept its value better than the Japanese yen and it might actually get even better in the months to come. And that's not all. The upcoming change to the tax favorable NISA account will help a lot. Let me explain. The NISA account, the Nippon Investment Saving Account is actually a way to park your pre-tax money into financial investment 
and every capital gain, every dividend is actually tax-free after a certain period of time. In January of next year, in a month from today, this NISA account will have more opportunity to have more financial product in there and a higher ceiling of investment. So, of course, all that money is not going to go into crypto, but when we all know that there is a lot of crypto ETF coming up and holy grail, the Bitcoin spot ETF should come very soon and probably in January, if the rumors are true, you can only imagine what the Japanese household with their very low yield saving accounts can do with all that money to get a better yield for their retirement. And there is a lot of money. If you look at that, the average Japanese household has 19 million yen saved. It's about $129,000 and 50% of it is on low yield savings account, as I was mentioning. So there's a lot of money that could come in the market and that could come and prop up the price of a lot of different financial products, including the price of major crypto currencies because it will be seen like everywhere else in the world less risky to invest in an ETF than trying to buy crypto directly. So I'm very optimistic for that to bring more adoption in the market and to push a lot of money and maybe who knows bring all the prices up. Japan got a head start in the crypto game but lost to more nimble countries. Fortunately all the groundwork that's being done in terms of tokenization, stablecoin, regulatory environment in general as well as the tax system should help revive the ecosystem and increase the adoption of crypto and bring more Japanese investors in the game, propping up the price and benefiting everybody all across the world. If you're interested in more things about Japan, I've prepared those videos for you to check. If you like this video or learn something, please give it a like. Do not hesitate to subscribe for more videos to come and if you have anything to share, please leave a comment down below. Thank you again for watching and until next time, goodbye!